it was quiet up to this point for the Yankees, and then Sunday night, a big trade goes down. Let's take a look at the nuts and bolts of it. I already mentioned Josh Donaldson coming over from the Minnesota Twins, along with shortstop Isaiah Connor falefa and catcher Brent Rortvit. In exchange, the Twins acquiring Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela. The name Sanchez involved, that makes it blockbuster alone, and Jack... Aaron Boone had hinted something might be coming, but this went full-blown on Sunday. It did, Bob. And when I analyze these, this trade, the two things or the two questions that I have first and foremost are, who is Josh Donaldson? He's 36 years old. When players get to that point, you worry about regression. So that's a big part of this for the Yankees. And the Yankees still believe in him. An on-base percentage of over 350 last year, 26 home runs, an OPS of over 800, above average defense at third, and a tenacity and a feistiness that should help their club. Clubhouse. Who was Gary Sanchez? He was a player that the Yankees doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on. But across the last four seasons, though the power was elite for a catcher, this is a guy who hit 201. And Michael, we know about the defensive problems. That became an issue. And with the Yankees, when they analyze a player, offense and pitch framing are almost valued equally. They now have Agashioka and Rortvit, though they won't bring the offense that Sanchez did. They are elite pitch framers. Yeah, this is one of those deals that you can't say it's a slam dunk either way. Did the Twins do great? Did the Yankees do great? I think it all has to play out, and I think there are other moves for the Yankees as well. But when you look at it in an analytical standpoint, if you look at Kana Falefa and if you look at Donaldson, they both have wars last year of about 3.5, right around there. Gary and Gio did not. So they really improved in that way. They didn't have a shortstop. So by getting Kana Falefa rather than going for a story or a Correa in a long-term deal, the Yankees are telling you we still believe in Volpe or Peraza, and they are going to be the shortstop of the future. I think that kind of Falefa simply is, is a little bit of a placeholder. I mean, just to kind of crystallize it, is it fair to say that maybe this deal was made, Jack, because they got the most they, they could out of Sanchez and Urshela? I think that is the case. If you talk to the Yankees in the offseason, they were still talking about their belief in Sanchez and about how they wanted that offensive monster to come out. And as I said, on the power side, it was there. But in other aspects of his game, especially defensively, there were issues. The Yankees' number one pitcher, Garrett Cole, stopped throwing to Gary Sanchez. And we talked about that on this show a lot. And the Yankees just decided it was time to move on from Sanchez. But we should take a moment to pay some homage to Sanchez for his Yankee career. This was a guy who was a Yankee since he was a teenager. He never stopped trying. The Yankees always talked about his work ethic and everything he put into trying to be the best he could on the field. Perhaps he blossoms in Minnesota. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go there in a less pressurized situation and do well. But I think you're right, Bob. I think the time had come to pull the plug on Sanchez. And I think the Yankees are a better team today than they were yesterday with this deal. That's the way you have to look at it. Again, I think there are other moves that come. But when it comes to Sanchez, talking to a lot of Yankee people, they felt that the outside noise became too loud for Gary. It really did affect him. And I think the only reason that Gary was still the Yankee catcher moving into 2022 is they could not find somebody that they thought was better. But the outside noise did trickle down. The fans, every time he makes a mistake defensively, it was magnified in that room. It got to Gary. And I think it affected Gary both defensively and offensively. And as Jack said, probably best for him to move on. Maybe he ends up having a really good season in Minnesota. Oh, that's a little bit of an unforgiving ballpark for a right-handed batter. And what the Yankees are telling you right now, we'll take an under 200 batting average, possibly behind the plate, in order to have great defense. Because a combination of the two, Rortvit and, and Higashioka, I don't know if you're going to have much more than 200 batting average. You might have some power, but you are going to have defense.